We're here on a typical day in Vancouver in Stanley Park, and we're shooting another episode of Canucks and Cars. Today, we're going to be testing out your Toyota Venza Hybrid. All right, we're doing this? Yeah, all right. <laughs> well, first off, where'd you grow up, and how did you get into playing hockey? I grew up in Smithtown, which is in uh, Long Island, New York. Um, I guess I got into hockey because my dad was big into it. Nice. Um, I grew up a Canadians fan in Long Island for some reason. My dad was That's a big cool. Canadians fan. I ended up getting drafted by Montreal in the first round and uh, Kirk Muller and Bob Ganey and uh, Guy Carboneau coached me. So it was a pretty surreal experience to be honest yeah, with you. Yeah, what a dream come true. Yeah, I was a huge, wow. I was a huge Saku Koivu fan. I ended up playing on his line for four years while wow. I was there. I mean, I probably I still have Go in my old room in my parents' house. I probably still got you know 70, 80 Saku Koivu hockey cards laying around. <laughs> Holy God. no, that's that's amazing. Like what a story. I remember well for me like I wanted to play hockey at five, and my dad basically said, "Megan, girls figure skate, boys play hockey." So the following year, I begged my mom and I got into it. But so long your story, dad she, told you that. Yeah, my dad told me that. Straight up. Straight up, my dad told wow, me that. That's so wild. it's it's <laughs> right. So actually, I have a daughter, so I, mean, I don't know if I could ever say that to her. You know, my thing, I think my dad's biggest thing was he was afraid that I was literally going to get hurt because back then women's hockey was just beginning. That's true. Yeah, that was different. so. Um, mindset, yeah. I mean, my first hockey game, the score was 21 nothing. I had 19 goals, and they had to move me up right away. They were like running, like get your daughter off the ice, like these other parents are going to kill me, kind of thing. So. <laughs> Where, was that against girl, all the girls though? No, that was boys. Yeah. Oh, so, wow. So yeah. So within so a month, you put I was playing. Nineteen goals up against boys. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I did. Yeah. So long story short, <laughs> my parents, my parents allowed me to. Um, they brought me to Kingston to Jaina Hefford hockey, like hockey school. Okay. When I came back home from it, I was like, oh my god, like this is amazing. I met Jaina Hefford, Vicky Sanahar, all these, like huge names. And uh, fast forward, 2006, not only did I play on the same team, but 2010, I was Jaina Hefford's line mate. Oh, that's really So cool. it's kind of yeah. like along the same lines of, same of, of you. Thing, yeah. yeah, like yeah. it's, that's awesome. You were the MVP of 2010? Yes, that's right. So, like, so that is. 2010 was probably one of my In Canada? I know. MVP, gold medal. Yeah, well that's for me wild. it was about the gold medals for How sure. How hard did you party after? <laughs> well, I don't know if, if you want to Google the pictures afterwards, but uh, the ones with the cigars, I, I woke up the next morning and I had a text from my brother Could and he's imagine. like, oh he's like, Megs, God. what the heck kind of, like, that's awesome. And I'm like, mom's going to kill me. Ah. But anyways, no, like, you know, we had support, we had backlash, you know how that goes. But for the most part, it's like, we worked so hard and it was, it was tough. Like, you know, for the Olympics being in Canada, us being Canadian, like we had so much pressure. And when you're not when you're not really in it, it's kind of hard to really, you know, understand what you know we go through as athletes as well, right? Like, you know, again the sacrifices. And I'm sure playing in the NHL, like you were probably away from your family a lot. A lot, yeah. yeah I left. I left home at uh, 14. I, I went away to prep school at 14. Um, so yeah, it's been. I spent most of my, you know, almost more of my life away from my family than than with yeah. them. Yeah. And now you're a skills and development coach, right? So what's like, how do you differentiate the two? Um, I think I would just, I would be just as proud. I think now that like, I've worked with some of the, our draft picks that are now starting to get on in, into the, um, into the roster and, mm -hmm. and helping them out. And you like, I, don't know, I think like being a dad kind of, you kind of like feel like these kids, are, these guys are your kids almost a little bit, right? Yeah. It's like, it's almost essentially like you're talking to yourself at that age. Right. So you're, all these kids will have the same fears, anxieties, maybe overconfidence um, at that stage of their career where they haven't had a taste of the NHL yet, right? And so it's all, it's kind of, could be a bit intimidating. So mm -hmm. I find like I just end up talking You're like a mentor to how I would well. talk to myself as a 20 year old, yeah. right? It's intimidating. They're like, you know, one day you're, I'm playing college hockey at Yale and then like the next season I'm with my first game, I'm lining up against Eric Lindros. Oh, you know what I mean? That's like, crazy. So when you <laughs> like mentally to get around on that is like it was it was tough. It took me like from the beginning of the season to the All Star break to mentally come around to the fact that like all right, let's just treat these guys as competitors, kind of thing, instead right. of you know instead of Mario Lemieux and Dominic Hasek and Martin Brodeur and you know just just think of them as like faceless competitors. It, was, it took a long time for me to, to come around on that. Well, that's it. That's all I have. Okay. Well, that was great. For you, but thanks, uh, Megan. yeah, no, thanks for taking the time, and it was nice to get to know you. And Likewise. Good luck with everything. Likewise, um, don't and pull me over. I, hey, you know what? <laughs> I won't.